domain name system or the DNS can be considered as the phone book of the internet. We humans use domain names like google.com which is easy to remember. However, the computers only understand an IP address and does not understand a domain name. This is where a DNS server is used to translate a domain name to its corresponding IP address. For example, if you want to browse google.com, type google.com in the browser URL. This request goes to a DNS server. The DNS server finds the IP address of google.com. The DNS server sends the IP address back to the computer and the computer connects to google.com using the IP address. There are several attacks on the DNS system. A DNS poisoning attack is a type of cyber attack which involves spoofing DNS entries which can result in a user being diverted from a legitimate server to a fraudulent one. Not many are aware of the DHCP protocol. The dynamic host configuration protocol, in short known as DHCP, it is a management protocol that is used to automatically assign an IP address to any device so that they can communicate using the internet protocol. DHCP automates and centrally manages these configurations rather than requiring network administrators to manually assign IP addresses to all network devices. Suppose there are these three computers that need IP addresses to communicate on the network. The DHCP communicates with these computers and automatically assigns them with an IP address along with other network details such as a subnet mask information, default gateway, and DNS address. The first system is assigned the IP address of 10.0.0.1, the second system is assigned 10.0.0.2 and the third system is assigned 10.0.0.3. You need to be aware that there are several DHCP related attacks which include DHCP spoofing and uh, DHCP starvation which can lead to availability issues. One of the most important device that is used on the internet is the router. Well, the router is a networking device that transmits data packets between different networks using a routing protocol. A simple example of a router is the Wi-Fi router device that you probably use at home to connect to the internet. Your local devices can connect to the router and the router can route the traffic onto the internet making it possible for you to connect to the internet using your local systems. Router security is a top priority. A security hole in the network can expose you to attackers and your organization at risk. Most routers provide enough security tools to harden your network against possible cyber attacks provided that you take the time to configure them to your advantage. Malware or malicious software is any program or file that is intentionally designed to disrupt or damage a computer system. Types of malware can include a wide range of concepts including virus, ransomware, worms, trojans, rootkits, keyloggers, adware, spyware, bots, remote access trojan, logic bombs and backdoors. We will discuss some of these malwares in the upcoming topics. A computer virus is a malware or a malicious program which is designed to spread from one system to another through self-replication and to perform any of the wide range of malicious activities. The malicious activities performed by a virus include data deletion, corruption, alteration and exfiltration. An example of a virus is the Melissa virus which was first detected in 1999. It is a macrovirus that was spread through email attachments. The best countermeasure against viruses is an antivirus or anti-malware scanner that is updated regularly. Another form of malware that is closely related to a virus is a worm. Worms are self-contained applications that don't require a host file or hard drive to infect. Worms typically are focused on replication and distribution rather than on direct damage and destruction. An example is a W32.alcra.f which is a worm that attempts to propagate through various P2P file sharing networks such as LimeWire. Worms are designed to exploit a specific vulnerability in a system such as operating system, protocol, service or application and then use that flaw to spread themselves to other systems with the same flaw. They may be used to deposit viruses, logic bombs, ransomware, backdoors or bots for botnets or they may perform direct virus-like activities on their own. Countermeasures for worms are the same as for viruses with the addition of keeping systems patched. The term bots or botnet is a shortened form of the phrase robot network. 
It is used to describe a malicious computer program that is used by a hacker to control your system remotely. A botnet is a culmination of traditional DOS attacks into a concept known as a distributed denial of service attack. A botnet can be used to perform any type of malicious activity, although they are most often used to perform distributed of denial flooding attacks. Botnets can be used to automatically send spam emails or to retrieve web pages or to change computer settings or perform any other malicious activity. Botnets are possible because most computers around the world are accessible over the internet and many of those computers have weak security. The best defense against the botnet is to keep your systems patched and hardened. Hashing is a one-way cryptographic function that takes in an input of any length and produces a fixed size unique output known as a hash value. A hash value serves as a unique code to detect when the original data source has been altered since the altered file will produce a different hash value. Passwords should never be stored in plain text. We should use a hashing function to store passwords. Let's take an example to understand this. Instead of storing the password ABC at 1 to 3 as plain text, a salt value is appended to the plain text password and then the result is hashed. This is referred to as the hashed value. A salt is randomly generated which is unique for each password. Both the salt value and the hashed value are stored together.